Hi guys and welcome to the second video of the video series to investigate the communication of the uh, Nest Protect. So how it, uh, who it talks to, whether it talks locally on the LAN or um, uh, and, and how it communicates outbound to the Nest Cloud and so on. So in the first video we learned that uh, it does do internal communication mostly for DNS and DHCP. I do not have another Nest device to see uh, if it actually communicates with other devices locally. Uh, just doing a, a little bit of reading, uh, apparently it does use also the Weave protocol to communicate uh, with other Nest devices locally. Uh, but we did verify that it does go out on TCP 11095 to talk to the Nest uh, cloud. Uh, and this is a protocol called Weave that was developed by Nest Labs. And uh, Nest actually was acquired by Google, so that happened later. And we also found that the Nest services are hosted in Amazon AWS, specifically in the Virginia uh, US East Region 1. Uh, so in this video, we really want to answer the next two questions, whether the communication is secure from the Nest Protect out to the Nest services on the Internet, and the other question is, uh, what uh, what information is found in in the packets that are going out to to the cloud? So we're going to open up the the packet, get a PCAP file, and and see what's inside of it, uh, just to make sure that you know it's it is secure and there's nothing really we can see. With that, let's pivot over to the extra hop. Once again, I'm on the Nest uh, Nest device seen by the external facing extra hop. And as you can see, once again, here's the TCP 11095 protocol. And we want to get a packet capture. So extra hop has a neat feature here called triggers, where you can actually create a trigger based on a specific condition. So in this case, this uh, nest PCAP trigger fires every time it sees a TCP open event. And when that happens, in the editor window, you can write a quick script to basically tell it uh, what to do when that event occurs. In this case, I just have a, a two-liner, just a debug to show whenever the, uh, whenever the PCAP file uh, gets initiated or the PCAP session capture starts. And then the second line is just telling ExtraHop to start a, uh, a smart precision packet capture only when this event happens and when this event happens on the specific device. So we're very surgical in the way we're capturing the packets um, and it only runs when you, when you need it to run. All right, so uh, let's go over to the ExtraHop appliance itself and go into the admin. I'm going to show you how you can access the packet captures. So from the admin console, under the packet captures, you can go download the packet captures that we've collected. And I have a bunch of other ones that I was, I was testing. But here's the Nest PCAP, the last one that we, we collected. So download it, open it. And as you can see, let's make this a bit bigger. It's only uh, showing 73 packets that we've collected for that communication. So very uh, precise in what we're looking for. So let's do a TCP. Uh, let's follow the TCP stream just to see if there's anything in there that we can, uh, we can glean. Uh, and if you notice, there is something here. And I did check this ahead of time. It's actually the serial number of my Nest Protect. So that's sent in the clear. And there's also the, I don't know what this is exactly. It might be the, the Nest type, the, the Protect, as opposed to the thermostat or something else. So it might be the model number. I'm not too sure. And, uh, and finally, the software version running on the Nest Protect is shown here. Other than that, I can't. I couldn't really make out anything else. Um, it's all encoded in the protocol spec itself. So it seems like this is all. Um, this is all encoded, and in a second, if we close this, 
I did some uh, some investigation, some reading. If you go here and look for uh, kind of like the, the protocol that Nest uses, I ended up on this website for Nest developers, specifically for Weave. And it is a protocol that was developed to specifically tackle the problems with, uh, you know, with, with devices that need to have low power, low CPU, low RAM, uh, in, in typical IoT environments in the home. So if you scroll down to the bottom of this of this uh, site, you can see this get the code button that will take you to GitHub to get more detail on this protocol and how it works. You can you can read the uh, readme file at the end here to, to get a, a better idea. But if you go to docs and uh, also, this is a good article, the Weave article, PDF, uh, Weave architecture, PDF. It's, it's, it's good to read. Uh, but if you go into the presentations and look at the Open Weave security, I have it open here. The Open Weave security, and then really the first bullet here. So secure device communication independent of the underlying transport. Uh, so really, they are doing all the the encryption, all the the security at layer seven at the application layer. So independent of the um, of the underlying layers, and and we did see that on the extra hop, there is no SSL or TLS happening uh, on the extra hop that we saw. Uh, so it is happening at the application level, uh, at the application layer. Uh, furthermore, if if you go back here and uh, go into the specs, you can go ahead and, and look through these specs. But really, the the protocol specification. Weave message layer is an interesting one. I also have a PDF ready here. And if you notice, it goes through the detail of the, of the actual communication. But the message prologue itself at the very top, it, it gives you the encryption type level. So all zeros, no encryption. If you put uh, all ones here, so first four bits uh, are ones, then you're actually encrypting uh, what's inside the message. So, so that's excellent. That's great. They're actually encrypting at the application layer, and that's that. That is good to know. That's what I was actually looking for. Uh, this is another document, uh, same uh, also at the uh, on GitHub in the document folder, and uh, this is really for the thermostat, not for the Nest Protect. But you can see that there are some product identifiers here, uh, the serial number. They they do send it out the software version and so on. Um, so that's probably what we saw, the product identifier or the vendor identifier that, that Nest that I couldn't really figure out. But uh, these are apparently, they go out in the clear. But other than that, the, the rest of it is pretty much encrypted. So that's great. That's excellent. So let's recap what we've done in this video. And look, go back to the questions. So we answered these two questions. We saw that they are using the weave protocol once again to go out and that the uh, the weave protocol does not encrypt at the session layer that's why you see a tcp uh, later in the next video you're going to see the communication uh, if it's encrypted will have ssl uh, instead of tcp at the beginning of it uh, on extra hop so this tells me that it's actually not encrypted at the session layer however we did look at the the documentation found that it is encrypted at the application layer. And and finally, we open up the packets and just to see if there's anything that we can capture from, from the wire directly on the protocol. And we did man, uh, manage to see the serial number, the software version, and probably the product uh, model number or something uh, in the clear. But the rest of it was um, was opaque to us. So that's great. Thanks a lot for watching. And in the last video, we're going to tackle the last two questions with regards to the Nest app itself and how it communicates. Thanks for watching.